We've all seen those super high prices on Ethernet cables at the local store. Well, why would you spend that much money when you can make your own for a fraction of the cost in very short order? Today, I'm going to show you how to make Ethernet cables the quick and easy way. What you're going to need is some Cat5 or Cat6 cable. I make most of mine these days with Cat6 since that's the new standard and is going to replace Cat5 eventually. First thing we need to do is strip back some insulation off the wire. We'll strip back several inches here, more than we actually need to go into the connector. We'll score the outer jacket, being careful not to nick the conductors on the inside. Twist it back, break it off, and now we'll untwist the individual conductors. And we untwist them a little further down inside the jacket. Once we've got all the wires untwisted, we'll just use a screwdriver blade to straighten these and to take the remaining kinks out of the cables. The next thing is to put the wires in the order that we'll be fitting them into the connector. Here's a chart that shows the normal order for putting RJ45 connectors on an Ethernet cable. On the left is a diagram for a straight connector. On a normal cable, you will connect both ends like this. On the right is a diagram for wiring a crossover cable. With a crossover cable, one connector is installed in the normal straight order, and the other end is installed as shown here for crossover. Now note that the connectors are shown with the pins facing toward you. First wire is orange white. That will be followed by orange. Then green white. And we're being careful down here at the bottom that these things aren't very twisted up. After green, white is blue. And then blue, white. And then green. And then brown, white, and brown. Now we'll try to keep these straight. Pull them beside each other. And let's double check to make sure we've got them right. Orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, and then brown, white, brown. Now holding the wire side by side like this firmly, we'll twist them back and forth just to kind of give them a little memory in the order that we want them. Now we should have some straight conductors exactly how we need them. We'll take our diagonal cutters and cut these off to about oh, three quarters of an inch. And you want to be careful that you get them straight across the ends. Now holding the connector with the pins facing us, we slide the whole group of wires into the connector and we'll be putting force down so that these stay in order as we go. Slide them up into the connector and check to make sure on both sides that the wire goes all the way to the end. And it does. And when we crimp it, this little pin right here will fold down inside the connector. So we want the insulation to go far enough in that this will crimp into it. Now we'll push the wire up in hard. As we do that, you know, we started out with three quarter inches of stripped cable. As we push the jacket up, that's become shorter. Next, we'll insert this into our crimping tool, keeping pressure, pushing the jacket in. 
crimp the wire and now we'll look right here and double check again to make sure we've got it right orange white orange green white blue blue white green brown white brown and we look to be sure that the wires come all the way to the end of the connector you can see the conductors right there on the inside so there's a good connector now all we need to do is the other end of the wire and we've got a cable that cost much less than the ones you find at the store and it only took a few minutes once you've done a few of these they go pretty quick the key to making this easy is exposing more wire than you're gonna need and do the bending to make a memory on the wire so they stay in the order they should and double check that the wire stayed in the order they should when you push them into the connector if you're making a cable for your rig microphone or some other specialty piece of gear the wiring may be different than what we showed here 